Hey everyone, hope you're having a wonderful week. I have something fun for you today. We're going to be learning some more materials in Blender for the next few videos. And this week I have a nice little metal foil shader, which I think works quite well. Best part is it's pretty simple. And as usual, all project files can be downloaded in the links below. And I'll be using my material template file, so make sure to get that too. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is create a new material, and I'm just going to name that one Metal Foil, like so. That's fine, you can name it whatever you want. And straight away, we're going to be working with displacement. So we can just ignore this principal BSDF for now. Don't delete it, we'll use it later. But add in a displacement, Ooh, a displacement node. And we can connect that up like so. And now into that displacement node, goes a math node. And now let's set that math node to subtract. And I'll show you why in a second. The first input for the subtract node will be a wave texture being controlled by a color ramp. So let's add in that color ramp. And now let's add in that wave texture and connect the color into the factor. Let's go into material preview real quick and have a look at this wave texture. And now the biggest thing we wanna change for this is our scale. So let's bring that up to something like six, maybe a bit more like 6.5. And I'm also going to give it some distortion, so it's not, uh, so they're not just perfectly straight lines. So let's bump this distortion up to like two, and the detail roughness. I'm going to put that all the way up to one. Now the phase offset we can leave the same, but what we are going to do is add in a mapping node, and this mapping node can be controlled by a texture coordinate. Now I'm going to set the texture coordinate to use generated UVs because they just work a bit better with this sphere. Now, I actually want this wave texture to be rotated 90 degrees. To be honest, it doesn't really matter, but I prefer horizontal lines. I'm gonna change the rotation on the y-axis to 90. And as you can see, that's flipped it. Now, next up, we actually, we actually need another wave texture here. So let's duplicate that wave texture and connect up the vector as well. So we have the same rotation. And this wave texture will be going into another color ramp. So let's connect that up. And if we have a look at this color ramp, we can see it's exactly the same as our other wave texture. And we don't want that. What we want are some small waves. So I'm going to bring the scale up to something like 60, 65. And I think that works perfectly. And I'm also going to bump the distortion up all the way to 5. I think 5 is good. Yeah, 5 is perfect for the distortion. Uh, we can leave the detail the same. I am going to bring the detail scale down to something like 0 0.7 and I'm going to put the detail roughness to 0.5 Now we can leave the phase offset as it is but I want to bring in a little bit more contrast to our wave texture here so I'm going to grab the color ramp and just clamp down these sliders and this will just really exaggerate that contrast so we have a nice clean black and white shader there and that looks great now obviously we can just use this as our main displacement but I think I'm going to prefer something a little bit more organic with more breakup between the waves. So to do that, I'm going to add in another math node. So I'm going to duplicate this one, Let's connect it like this, and then set it to add. The second value here is actually going to be another color ramp. And this color ramp will be controlled by a noise texture. You can use the factor or you can use the color. This scenario, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just use the color though. And for this particular noise texture, I'm going to actually change the scale to something like 160. So if we have a look at that and we can leave everything as is. Now, before we move on, I just want to clamp down this color ramp to get a bit more contrast. So I'm going to bring the black slider up and the white slider to the left. And I think that looks fine. So if we have a look at our, our math node here now, we can see that it has now added that noise to our wave texture. And that works really nicely. You might even want to add a little bit more contrast just to get a bit, a bit harsher transition between the noise texture and the wave. Now that's perfect. Next up is we want to add in our big wave texture just so we get a bit more variation. So to do that, I'm going to grab this color ramp, the output, and move it into the first value of our subtract node. And then the second value, if we have a look at this, will be the output of our add node. 
and that's worked really nicely. So if we actually have a look at this um, outside of just a viewer node, and let's say in our displacement, if we connect up our principal BSDF, if we want to see how this looks, uh, obviously this is an A metal foil shader, so we need to change our principal BSDF. So to do that, let's just bring the roughness all the way down and our metallic all the way up. And actually, uh, that roughness I brought down a little bit too much. Let's put that at something like 0.3. And bring down the scale to something like 0 0.001. And that should work nicely. And that's pretty much it. As I said, it's a really easy shader, but super powerful and can add some really nice uh, really nice texture variation to your work. Maybe you want a metal foil ball. I don't know. You knock yourself out. Let's have a look at what it looks like on our demo plane here. So I'm going to bring that into view and just add our material to it. And you might find that it's not mapping properly. And you'll be like, whoa, what the heck? It was working fine on our sphere. What you want to do is just come down here to the rotation and change the Y from 90 to 0. Anyway, guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned something. As I said earlier, you can download the project files for this effect in the link in the description. I'm working on another pretty sizable video at the moment. So in the meantime, I'll probably just be doing more material tutorials like this. Stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time.